In this video, we'll use the project we developed in the previous video and view it from Internet Explorer using local loopback on this development PC so we can verify that all the project files are set up correctly before we start adding in hardware drivers and NIC cards and Internet stuff. The first thing we have to do is convert all of the screens we created down to HTML files that the remote client can download and use. There's a number of ways you can do that, but the easiest is to make sure all the screens are saved and closed and then click on the Point of View button and select Save All as HTML. Easy. By the way, if you want to see those HTML files, they are located in the web folder in your project. The next step is to click on this Verify tool under the Home tab. It checks to make sure everything is properly set up for the type of project you are creating. Make sure you run this, especially if you make any changes to the web settings because it makes sure that all of the HTML file associations are set up correctly. That's really important. Next, we will need a little web server to act as our mini internet connection between the HMI application and the Internet Explorer here on our local PC. Fortunately, Point of View has one included for us to use. We will use this NT web server to do our initial testing because it doesn't require any setup and that will get us up and running faster. Please, don't use this in your final system. It's not the server Point of View is tested with and it's not nearly as secure as the IIS server that we'll install in a later video. Navigate down to your Point of View software install. In the bin folder, you'll find this NT web server. Copy and paste that in the web subfolder of your Point of View project. Now just double click on the web server to start it. If you see this listening, then you're good to go. If you get a message that says the NT web server failed to open a socket, it's usually because Microsoft IIS web server is running in the background. If so, then stop IIS and restart the NT web server. But it could be that something else is running that's using TCP IP port 80. That's the port we need for local loopback. Well, here's a trick. An easy way to find out if port 80 is being used is go to the command prompt and type netstat -a -o -b. I'm going to hit control C to kill this command so things don't scroll out of my screen buffer. Now if I scroll to the top of the window, I see the NT web server is using port 80. Exactly what we expect. If you can't get the NT web server to run, then go down this list and see if anyone else is using port 80. If so, then you need to stop that process to free up port 80 so our NT web server can run. OK, well, we didn't have that issue. We got this listening message, so we're good to go. We just run the application on the local development PC. Let me adjust that window a little bit and open Internet Explorer and point it to the local loopback project screen, which is at the loopback address we provided and the name of the screen we want 127.001 main. You'll see it downloading those HTML screens we created, and just like that, you now have remote control of the original app. You can change the circle color and view the time over on the server, which is really just reading the tag value on the server of course. If we exit the remote app, it just kills the process on the client, not the server. The server app is still running. Well, that's it. Let's take a step back and review what we did. This example was just running Internet Explorer on the local server PC and bypassing all Internet hardware including the NIC card on this PC. We did that by using a little temporary web server called NT Web Server. Here's a checklist of what we did to get to this point. In the previous video, we set the local loopback address to 127.0.0.1. We set the TCP IP server to automatic and we built a sample program. In this video, we took that project and we saved all of the screens as HTML files that the client could download and use. We have verified the project after setting all the web settings. Remember, anytime you make a web setting change, you have to re-verify the project to get the file associations to line up. We launched the NT web server from the project folder so we would have a little mini network running, and then we opened our browser and pointed it to the server app. If yours didn't work like this, then use this as a checklist to go back and verify everything. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call AutomationDirect's Direct's free, award-winning tech support during regular business hours. They will be happy to help you. And don't forget the forums. There are lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any support questions there. The AutomationDirect Direct support staff doesn't monitor the forums on a regular basis.